Hello everybody, welcome to chapter 1, the role of the support worker. In this chapter, the role of the support worker, our whole discussion will be on what kind of role we have to play as a personal support worker in our professional life will be the main focus of our discussion. Basically, the role of the support worker is to assist the client as per needed, as mentioned in the care plan, as per needed care, under the supervision of the nurses and under the guidance of the family members as well. So basically, the role of the support worker is to assist the clients to provide care and assistance to accomplish, to achieve the task of everyday living. Basically here, our focus will be to accomplish the task, accomplish the task of everyday living. So in everyday living, we need to know what are the basic fundamental tasks we are supposed to do. Early in the morning, preparing breakfast, and then preparing the client, giving the personal care, making them ready for the breakfast, bringing them to the dining room or in the kitchen of their own house, client's house, and so on. A variety of assistance may be required. It depends on their need. So client's need will determine our role to be played. That's why a variety of assistance may be required for some and very little for some others. Those who are dependent, we need to give them very little support. For those who are independent, we need to focus on most of the work for them. It in, that includes personal care, those who are dependent, we have to give them personal care and support services. We have to help them in grooming. We may have to come there here, mouth care, personal care, changing briefs, giving them choice for what type of dress they love to wear for the day and what kind of breakfast, what item of food in the breakfast they love to eat for the day. Everything we do by asking them. You make a difference in people's life. Our role as a support worker is to make a changes in people's life, that changes should be for the positive outcome. And our ultimate goal of support work is to improve the client's quality of life. Client, every client has their, has to have their quality of life to be maintained. And our basic, our fundamental job is to maintain their quality of life. So the quality of life, this is a very important area of our discussion. So what includes the quality of life? Basically, quality of life means provide care in kind and sensitive and understanding manner. We have to provide the care in the kind. Kind is a showing our generosity, it's a kindness. We have to be very kind, sensitive, and understanding manner. We have to demonstrate the manner so that our client will understand us and we can understand them as well. Use of discretion. It is your judgment. You are responsible of judgment. You have to use your judgment. For example, if a client is depending on you for so many activities of daily living, you have to give them the best choice. You have to follow their own uh, selection, their choice. You have to follow. It's not we give them our choice, but it is their choice we have to follow. And for that, we still have to make the judgment what could be better for them. We have to think in that line. 
honor the client's right to confidentiality. You have to honor. We have to honor the client's right. There are so many rights of the clients who live in the long-term care facilities and in the home. They have different rights, like rights to be cared for. They have the rights to get privacy, their confidentiality of their health concern. They don't want to expose their health condition to other people whom they do not want. So this is the health care confidentiality we have to maintain. We cannot talk about the client's medical condition with other people, etc. We have to show, display the empathy. We have to show empathy. What is empathy? It is, it is understanding the reality from their perspective, having an understanding of another person's emotion. It is putting yourself in their shoes and seeing the world from their eyes. That's called empathy. Whereas there is another word, similar word, sympathy. Sympathy is being judgmental to others, which is not good in healthcare field. We have to be showing sympathy. It means we have to see the reality from their perspective, not from our perspective. Similarly, we have to advocate the client's, client's condition, client's right. It means we have to be speaking or acting on their behalf. Similarly, support worker across Canada, there are so many rules and regulation in every state, in every province that describes the scope of practice of a personal support worker. It means what are the basic fundamental duties they have to perform and so on. The client is always the focus of care. Whatever is the regulation or wherever you go across Canada, always the center of focus is always the client. Client safety, client's care, Clients' right must be always appreciated and fulfilled. There are differences in educational programs, work setting, job responsibilities, and terms used to describe the support workers across Canada. In this big country of Canada, wherever we go, whatever province we live in, wherever we go, we may have a different terms used to describe the duty of a support worker, whatever we will be the setting, like hospital, long-term care, retirement homes, or nursing homes. But the center of focus is the client care. All work to meet the client's need. Fundamentally, all the work as a personal support worker, we have to meet the client's need, the client's, what the client's need. And all the needs of the client is mentioned in the client's care plan. Remember, this client's care plan is also called nursing care plan. We have to see the nursing care plan before we approach the client. For example, what time we have to feed the client, what time we have to give them sour, what time we have to make them ready, and what time we have to transfer them from bed to the wheelchair or wheelchair to the bed. Like everything is mentioned in the nursing care plan. That is why our main focus is always the client's care and we have to meet the client's need and our guideline is the nursing care plan we have to follow. That's the mandatory, that's the compulsory thing. A scope of practice, it is our job description. What is the scope of practice for the personal support worker? May be different from province to province and territory to territory. Appendix at the end of the book outlines 
what the support worker is called in the different provinces and territories. There are so many names given to the personal support worker. In Canada, in Ontario, we are called personal support worker or support worker or health care aid. And in other provinces, the name may be the different. The setting for support work. We work in a variety of agency-based and the community-based setting. There are basically two types of setting we work. One is called agency-based or facility. Under the facility, it may be hospital, it may be long-term care facility, it may be retirement home, it may be nursing home, or community-based setting, it is the client's own home. This is called community. When we work in the client's home, it is called community. When we work in the hospital, when we work in the long-term care, it is called facility or agency base. In all settings, we have to ensure the safety of the client. Remember, safety first. Safety is always the number one concern everywhere no matter where we work, including those with the cognitive, cognitive means mental functioning, cognitive or mental health challenges, those clients who are mentally unable to make the good decision of their health care, their choices, their life, or those who are cognitively impaired, who cannot make a good decision of their life, who are not uh, aware of the external reality, what's going on outside who do not know because of the diseases such, such as dementia and Alzheimer's disease. These clients are cognitively impaired. And at that time, we have to ensure the client's safety. That is always the number one priority. We may also assist the clients with the social support or social reintegration. We have to support the client in the social reintegration. What do you mean by social reintegration? Social reintegration means to reintroducing the client in the social mainstream society with their friends and family. For example, a client is having the issue of paralysis. We are working as a support worker. We are helping the client a lot. We are regularly uh, making them aware of their medication. We are working with, with the broader healthcare team. There are occupational therapists, physiotherapists. There are nurses, uh, community reintegration program. We have to go them go there with the client and we have to assist the client in every moment and the client gradually recovers from the illness and client becomes independent person and the client once again reintroduces in the society with the friends and family. This is called social reintegration. In this situation, our job is very, very significant. We have to provide comfort and end of life care. This is the comfort and end of life care. Remember, this comfort and end of life care, there is a word palliative care. You may have this word palliative care. Palliative care is the care given to the in this stage of life to the person. It is given more and more comfort to the people and making their uh, end of life very, very easier for the client, which is not easier for we worker and for the family member, but we try our best to give them as comfort as possible. And this is called the care to the dying clients. These are the clients who are dying. And Basically, our roles and responsibilities are increased day by day in the healthcare setting. 
no matter where we work. Our role as a personal support worker is getting wider and wider. We are being given more and more responsibility. This is a very rewarding job and so many people like hundreds and thousands of people are enjoying this job, loving this job and working as a personal support worker. We have to begin our care from the personal care. Remember, this is the first and the foremost thing. We have to start our care from the personal care. It involves assisting with the activities of daily living, which we, we call ADLs, activities of daily living, that combines those activities like eating, bathing, it's called bathing, it's a grooming, another is grooming, grooming, dressing them, giving them choice what dress they like for the day, taking them for the toileting. At toileting, it, it covers bowel movement and bladder movement, moving and positioning. Remember, repositioning every two hours. This is a formula for we support worker have to follow. Reposition the client every two hours if they are bedridden, if they are bed bound, if they cannot move, if they are on the bed like most of the time, we have to go and reposition them every two hours because repositioning prevents them from developing pressure ulcer. And pressure ulcer is one of the most common and very, very serious health issue nowadays. Similarly, we assist with the instrumental activities of daily living. Here we talk about the ADLs activities of daily living. Here we are talking about activity, instrumental activities of daily living. See the instrumental? It also combines the activity that you have to do even more job in the community setting or in the facility setting, uh, taking their uh, garments, their clothing for the laundry, making them uh, breakfast, preparing their, preparing their meals and helping them as per needed in the community setting, which is called instrumental activities of daily living. It, is, it also covers uh, going for their grocery, uh, helping them in paying their bills and all other activities. It is even broader than the activities of daily livings. Not responsible for deciding what should or should not be done, must observe and report the changes in the client's behavior. Remember, whatever is the activity we involve in, we may be involving in the activities of daily lives or we may be involving in the instrumental activities of daily livings in the community setting. Whatever is the responsibility we are given and we have to fulfill, there is a biggest responsibility we must, we must observe and report the changes in the client's condition. If the client has a difficulty breathing, if the client's uh, lips and legs and hand facial uh, area, if it goes bluish color, cyanotic, it's because of the lack of blood circulation. If the client has SOB, shortness of breath, it means difficulty breathing, we have to report. We have to report these critical situation as soon as possible because it might lead to life-threatening condition of our clients. We are working in a broad nursing team, nurses and physiotherapists and occupational therapists and other people. We assist the nurses and other healthcare providers by following the established care plan. 
we already talk about the care plan we another name of the care plan is nursing care plan the nurses prepare this nursing care plan as per the need of the client and we have to work with the nursing care plan or the care plan for each client each client is special each client has a diff uh, their own need and each client has their own uh, dignity we have to respect as individual we never ever generalize our clients each of them are special for us for us we healthcare workers consult with other healthcare providers in order to provide care there is a role in this area as a support worker we always have to ask until we know them we do not play with that we have to know it you have so many chances to clarify the work if you do not know the work clarify with the nurses clarify with the supervisor for the community setting you can call them you have a telephone or a cell phone facility or you have a email you can do email you have so many communication facility you can utilize to get clarify family support we may have to involve in the family support when we work in the community we are working under the supervision of the family member the loved one of the family members it is there like reflect the situation suppose you are working with the 90 years old client and all other family members are there that client is their grandfather or grandmother we have to respect the client's love for the loved one and how they expect our job we have to provide them we have to meet their expectation and we need to we need to expect we sometime we can expect family support also and we are always ready to give the family support as well social support ccac and other social organization government organization they are coming to the home and supporting the clients need and we have to do the social support as well and housekeeping this is a biggest job in the community setting in the facility setting also there are certain jobs of housekeeping but in the community setting personal support workers are supposed to do the housekeeping job and home management you have to manage the kitchen go for grocery buy the grocery and come follow the care plan report any changes and so on people you support who are the people you support what are the name of the different names common name of those people patient sometime we call them patient if the person receiving care in the hospital setting we say them patient we don't say client in the hospital we say patient in the hospital if they live in the long term care home or residential facility a person living in the residential facility we call them resident a client when we call per, call a person a client person receiving care or support services in the community see the client with community remember this terminology just understand them them in combining together client and community in the community setting we call them client general term for the all people receiving health care or support services those people who live in the community their own home or apartment and they receive the health care support there they are called client let me repeat it once again for you patients are those people who are getting care receiving care in the hospital resident are the people who live in the residential facilities like nursing home long term long term care home etc and client is individual who live in the community means either their own home or in the apartment building rental building condominium building whatever is the facility 
not the facility, whatever is the community they live in. Remember, every person is unique. Every person is special. We never generalize. Every person has his or her own need. Every person needs different medication. Every person is uh, respected as a whole individual. Not Do not generalize our clients, our residents, or patients. Caring for individuals, older. So these are the individuals we support worker are supposed to care. Older adults. Older adults who live in the community or facility or in the hospital setting, no matter where they live. But older adult, people in their advanced age, these are the people, elderly people. There are different terminologies being used for these people. We are looking after them. We are giving them care as they need. People with disability, certain neurological disorder and mental health disorder, physiological disorder, we need to look after these clients as well. Similarly, we go with the people with the medical issue certain people in certain condition. People are diagnosed with different medical condition like diabetes, like a stroke, like heart disease and so on. In those medical condition, we have to help them. We have to follow their care plan and we have to help them under the supervision of the nurses and other healthcare professional. Similarly, people having surgery, before the surgery and after the surgery, we meet our uh, patient because surgery happens in the hospital and we say them patient who are in the surgical uh, procedures and we are helping them before the surgery and after the surgery before the surgery and after the surgery, but during the surgery, we are not supposed to be there. People with mental health problem, nowadays mental health issue is coming as an alarming problem, health issue, and such as anxiety disorder, depression disorder, schizophrenia, and so on. There are so many mental health conditions we also have to work in the mental health hospital, certain neurological condition like dementia and Alzheimer's disease. There are so many types of those disease. We may have to work with those people. People needing rehabilitation. Who are the people rehabilitating? The people who have certain health condition, who have gone for the surgical procedure and they are still in the phase of recovery and they are put in the rehab. Rehab is in the hospital side. Every hospital, they have their rehabilitation center where the patients are taught how to use wheelchair, how to use certain prosthesis. These people are taught. The patients are taught in the rehabilitation and maybe we need to work in the rehabilitation centers. Children, for example, if we work in the sick kid hospital, we may be working with the small children, school age children, teenage, um, um, boys and girls, and so on. So we have to be very careful while working with the children because they are sometimes they are difficult and sometimes they are easier as well. Mothers and newborns, these are every hospital has a maternity section and the maternity area, we may have to work with the mother and newborns. We, we need to have a special knowledge for that. And if we go to work those section, we will be given some extra trainings before we start our job there in those sections and people requiring special care some people who require special care like the people with the mental health and other mental uh, physiological condition 
Therefore, no matter where we work, we may be working with so many varieties of people with their health condition, their neurological condition, their mental health condition, their physiological condition, children with mother, with newborn, and so on. Therefore, since our work is such a broader and getting broader and broader, we need to have the knowledge accordingly. Therefore, this job is being very important. Support workers' job is being considered more important than in the past. So, but we are not working alone. There is a big and broader healthcare team. We are working as a team member. A group of people working together towards a common goal. What do you mean by common goal? Common goal is to, to make, to give the optimum health care to our older clients or whoever is, whatever is the age of the client, our client or our patients, the maximum optimum amount of support we give them as they need. It includes the professional with the varieties of skills and knowledge. There are so many other professionals who have a specific knowledge and special skills to do. For example, one nurse comes and performs certain catheterization. She puts the catheter in the client who has a bladder issue, person who cannot do the urination for the whole day for more hours, then the, the nurse comes and do the procedure called catheterization. That is called the special knowledge with the special skill. The goal is to provide quality care. Whatever is the the function, the the whatever is the role we perform there, we play, but the ultimate aim of our role is to provide the quality care, to give them dignity, to provide them uh, their, their need as mentioned in the care plan. The support worker is an important member of the healthcare team. As we already discussed, our role is very, very important and we have to play that role as a support worker. There are some other type of worker who are called regulated worker. A regulated profession is a self-governing are we regulated worker? We are not. Who is a regulated worker? Nurses, RPNs, uh, uh, RNs, uh, occupational therapists, physiotherapists, they are called regulated workers. It has a professional organization called a college. The organization, the professional organization, the name of that is college, that sets education that determines what type of education and they also provide them the license requirements. The college establishes the scope of practice, codes of ethics and standard of conduct for its member. All the nurses, like the Colleges of Nurses of Ontario, it is called CNO, Colleges of Nurses of Ontario, that is the college of all the nurses in Ontario. The college determines the education level, college gives them the license and so on. They also determine what is the code of ethics, what is the standard of practice or standard of conduct for its member, all it is decided by the college. Unregulated care provider, an unregulated care provider is does not have a professional college. They don't have a professional college. There are no official requirement for educational program. There is not an educational official requirement for that. No code of ethics, but must adhere to codes of behavior as directed by the employer. employer. Anybody can work there. They don't need to have the license. They don't have any college. Support workers are unregulated workers. Remember, it clarifies here. Are we regulated? 
No, we are unregulated. Support workers are unregulated workers referred to as unregulated care provider. We are also called unregulated care provider or the abbreviation for this is UCPs. UCPs. And what is the scope of practice? What are the area of our practice, our work? What are the area we can work? This is called scope of practice. To protect the client from harm, there may be different type of harm, physical harm, mental harm, psychological harm. You must know what you can do. Before you go to the client, you must know what you are going there, why you are going there. And you also must know what you cannot do. This is the area of your scope of practice. You have to know what you have, what you can do and what you cannot do. And the legal limits of your role. Everywhere, our healthcare workers, they are within the legal limit of their role, their performance and their duties, their responsibilities. Never perform a function or task. See here, this is very important for us. Never perform a function or task that you have not been trained to do or that is beyond your legal limits. Can you give oxygen to the client who has a difficulty breathing? No. Can you give insulin? Can you do some um, injection activities to the clients who need the injection right away? No, because your scope of practice as a personal support worker, we cannot perform those activities. Our job is to observe and to report as soon as possible to prevent the further damage or harm to our client or our patient. Now we have to follow different sources of information about the scope of practice. So what information we have to know for our activities, our scope of practice, educational program. This is why we are here. We want to be personal support worker in Ontario. That's why we are reading this course, educational program, employers policies, again, after we get the certificate, after we pass this course, we also have to follow employer's facility. Every employer may have a different policy. We have to comply with their policy. We have to follow their policy. We have to follow their protocols. It is the facilities or employer's own rules and regulation. And there are always supervisor. These supervisor are basically they are the nurses, registered nurses are supervisor and we are working under their supervision. A nurse is licensed or regulated by the province to maintain overall responsibility for planning and provision of care. What type of provision of care and what type of plan the client needs? They make a nursing care plan. That's why, which we call only care plan, they make the nursing care plan. That's called planning and provision of care. According to their nursing care plan or care plan, we are guided what to do from the, during our shift, what to do, whatever may be the shift, eight hours, 7.5, um, half hour a shift, eight hour a shift, 12 hour a shift. It depends on the facilities policy and uh, what type of planning and provision is there. We have to follow the supervisor. We have to follow the nursing care plan. We have to follow the care plan. We have to follow the employer's policies. We have to have the certification. That's why we are here today for our educational program. Now, we are support workers, and but still, we are supervised by the nurses, by the senior, more knowledgeable people. Who are our supervisors? RN, registered nurses. 
assesses, they do the assessment, they develop nursing care plan, as we already discussed about that. Nursing care plan, they do the implements according to the nursing care plan. They do, they do the implements and they evaluate whether the care provi being provided to the client is effective or not. They do the evaluation at the end of their care and they carry out physician's order. The, it is the registered nurses who also carry out physician's orders. What are the physician's order? These orders are what type of medication, what type of other procedure, what type of lab activities are necessary for the client. Physicians are the doctors who give the nurses those orders and they carry out the orders. An RN is usually the team leader of the healthcare team consisting of the LPN, licensed practical nurse, which is also called RPN, registered practical nurses, support workers with the support workers, and other allied health care provider. Other allied health care provider includes physiotherapist, which is called PT physiotherapist, and OT occupational therapist, and so on. Similarly, Support workers may be supervised by an RN or RPN or LPN. It's the same. RN is different. RPN or LPN is the same. Or may be hired directly by the clients. Support worker may be supervised by RN, LPN or may be hired directly by the clients. The client, they may hire you as their personal uh, support worker. You must be aware of the task and procedure you can perform as a support worker. So how you begin the work, you must be aware of the task. What are your job? What are your responsibility? That means the task and the procedure. What procedure you are supposed to do? You can perform as a support worker. You have to know your scope of practice. This is called scope of practice. What are the area or, or what you can do and what you cannot do? These are the area you must know before you start your job. Being a professional. Remember, being a professional is very important. Professionalism includes our way of talking, how we show our commitment to the work, how, how much punctual we are, how much respect we can give to other. All people are, they, they need their dignity of life. All people are unique. All people are special. They are individual. We have to respect them. We have to express our empathy. Demonstrate the respect for others. Commitment. This is the commitment of the work. If you are punctual in you, are, if you are displaying your proper commitment and you are showing up every day as your schedule, you are a good professional. Your competence. It's all about the knowledge you have. It's the scope of practice. If you know what you have to do or what you have not to do, that's the competence, that's the depth of knowledge you need to know. And appropriate behavior. There are different type of behavior, but you have to display the professional behavior. There it needs very nice communication. Communication is a number one um, measuring rod to your appropriate behavior and your professionalism or professional behavior and have a professional appearance. Your appearance shows what type of professional you are. It depends on what type of what type of uniform you wear. All the healthcare workers they are supposed to wear their own uniform which is the scrub and the pant. They have to be professional to look at. Be cheerful, you have to be healthy, happy and friendly. You have to be friendly, not the friend. 
there is a difference between be to be a friend and to be friendly. Be friendly with everybody, not the friend. Usually, we healthcare worker must be friendly with, with all our clients, but we don't develop personal friendship with the clients. Work when is scheduled. We have to work when we are given the schedule. This is our another aspect of professionalism. Perform task competently. Competently means with the knowledge, perfectly, as perfectly as you can. That's the competency with the knowledge and help other. We are always stretching our hands to help other people. You have to show curiosity, enthusiasm of learning something, new ideas. Consideration, you have to think it as it is and you have to display honesty. Honesty is the best policy. As long as you are honest, you are visible, you are being watched, you are under supervision, your honesty will be counted. Box number one statement, page number 14, it shows that that shows a negative attitude. What are the negative attitude? Can you tell me? Just the rough tone of voice, high pitch in language, jerky movement, showing attitude of other, being angry to others, yelling at other people. These are the um, most common negative attitude people have. And page number 15, it des describes what are the professional appearance. We must have to wear our professional dress. There is a dress code for support worker and we have to follow all the dress code as a support worker. Our scrub and pant are there to wear according to the facilities policy. They determine what kind of color, what type of dress is good for the support worker. They determine. Continuation of the professional behavior. If we cannot, we fail to display the professionalism, we are not considered as a professional. We must have a positive attitude. We must have to develop the habit of showing empathy. Be positive, show the empathy, sense of responsibility. Once we are given the assignment to provide care for the for the resident and we have to do as the care plan says, as the nursing supervisor says, that's our responsibility. We are accountable and we have to take the accountability of our action. Means we have to be responsible and we have to take the responsibility of our every action. A professional appearance, your, your appearance is the mirror other people see on it. If your appearance is positive appearance, if you look professional, well-groomed, uh, properly cleaned face, not much jewelry, and as per the facility policy, it is good to go. You should have a professional appearance. Discretion about the client's information. You have to be very careful about the client's information. Do not talk about the client. Do not share client's information with anybody, but with your healthcare team, they will be uh, sharing the information. For example, you cannot talk about your client with your family member, with your husband, with your wife, with your friends, in the team Hortons, in the elevator, in the stair, nowhere. Not at all. You can't share any single bit of client's information with anybody. It is legal issue. And you have to keep, make your mind open and you have to accept new things. You are always learning new things. Every day is a new day and every day is a learning day. Advocating for the client, advocating means you are, you are talking about good for the client. You are asking something good for the client, something better for the client with the nurses, with the family member. 
you are using your own discretion, your own judgment. You, if your judgment, your knowledge, skill, and judgment helps you, you can ask for betterment for the client. That's called advocating for the client. Discretion about the personal matters. You can talk about the client's personal matter with the family member of the healthcare team for the to achieve the better health outcome of the client, to support the client, to provide more comfort for the client, you can talk about that. But you cannot talk about anything for your own personal benefit, for your monetary benefit and other benefit. Using acceptable speech and language, we have to use acceptable speech and language. Our language should be professional. We have to use soft tone of voice while using the language, short and clear sentence we have to speak. If we speak very lengthy sentence and very clumsy sentence, our client, our patients, uh, they will not understand us and there will be the gap of communication, which is the beginning of problem. Confidentiality. All health information and health condition and medical condition and medication being given or being taken, these come under confidentiality. We cannot share client's information with anybody. It is not acceptable and it is the law of our province or our uh, country that we are legally we have to, we have to, uh, we have to pay for that. We have to be given punishment for that if we disclose the confidentiality, if we disclose the client's personal health information with other people. Who are the people who can take the information? The POA, which is called power of attorney of the client, or the the care team members, only the care team members. Even the one, one side client information, you cannot share to another side, another, another team. You cannot share the client's information. You cannot, you, you cannot share any single bit of information with other people. Respect and guard personal and private information about another person. We are here to respect their information and we have to guard. Guard means like a security guard looking after benefit of other. We have to be working as a guard for their personal and private information about and another person. We cannot uh, disclose somebody's information to other people, it means. Share information only with the healthcare team, but we have to share the information only with the healthcare team who are working at the moment. Even the healthcare team of the past, we cannot share. At the moment, who are working with that client, those team members, like the doctors, sometimes doctor may ask you some question. Sometimes the occupational therapist talk about what are the mattresses or the bed or the wheelchair condition of the client. They may be asking. Sometimes physiotherapy may be asking with you, asking you about the client. And most of the time, the nurse will be asking you about the client and you have to give them information. These are the people of healthcare team. And those healthcare team members are the people who involve in the client's care at the at present time, not in the past or not in the future, at the client's care at present. Never talk with the client about another client. Never talk a client about another client. Generally, we don't care about talking about mm -hmm one person to another person, but in healthcare, this is totally unacceptable. Avoid talking about the co-workers. This is called bullying also. Just talking about the co-workers with other people, and this is not acceptable. We have to avoid talking about these co-workers. Do not discuss work issue. We can't discuss about the work issue because work issue are 
connected with the client's care and client's issue, client care issues outside the work area. If we disclose those client issue and the work issue, this is a very, very objectionable. And this compassionate care is the most beautiful terminology we have to use and we have to know what does it mean. A compassionate care, also known as person-centered care, see, is the client-centered, patient-centered in hospital and client-centered in community, resident-centered in long-term care, caring about another person. Compassionate care is caring about another person with respect, with dignity. Caring, having concern for the dignity, independence, preference, privacy, and safety. There is a formula of DIPS. DIPS means dignity. D for dignity. D-I. I for independence. We have to work for the client's independence. Our main goal is to give them the prestige they deserve, which is dignity. Independence, always anybody, everybody, they want to be independent. We have to work for that. And preferences, it is the client's choice. We have to focus on their choice, not our choice. And privacy, this is called confidentiality. We have to maintain their privacy. When we are giving sour to our client, we have to close the door. When we are giving them morning care, we have to close the curtain. And if somebody is coming to approach you when you are giving care, you have to stop the person not to come there. It will breach the privacy of the client. You have to tell the person. And safety, safety is the number one reason. So D-I-P-P-S, DIPS means dignity, independence, preference, privacy, and safety of clients and their families are all the times we have to maintain, we have to focus on the those serious and sensitive areas. True compassionate care includes kindness, see, you have to demonstrate your generosity, how kind you are, your kindness makes changes in others' life. You have to be honest. Even if you make certain error, you have to honestly report it. This is called reporting. If you try to hide some error, you, to hide one error, you have to make other so many errors. And that, that leads to your, that leads to the problem in your job and you are legally responsible to justify yourself sensitivity all the elderly population they are very sensitive and we have to maintain their sensitivity their information their physical condition and our goal is to give them maximum comfort from our part and the judgment the discretion the choice we have to give them we have to respect them they deserve respect they are human beings like us and understanding we have to understand them they don't have to understand us, but we have to understand them. We have to understand what culture they belong to. We have to understand what language they speak. We have to understand what background they have, what is their food preferences, what is their uh, habit, what they want, when they want, and how they want. We have to understand them. Similarly, as we already discussed the formula of DIPS, the abbreviation of DIPS, D stands for dignity, state of feeling worthy or valued. Everybody has a dignity. That is the state of the prestige they deserve and feeling of the worthy and value and the meaning of their life. We have to maintain the dignity. Independence, everybody has the independent life. We have to think that and we have to allow the client to do what they want or they can. It is their independence and we have to respect it. Preferences simply means the choice. We have to allow the client to make their choices. 
what type of food they want to eat today, what type of clothing they want to wear today, what type of where they want to go today, and uh, what type of communication or what type of uh, entertainment they want today. We have to focus on their own preferences, not our preferences. Privacy. We already discussed about the confidentiality and the privacy. These are very important. Clients' bodies and affairs are private from the viewing by others. When you are giving them morning care, see the clients' bodies and affairs are private for viewing by the others. We have to maintain their privacy. Uh, how do you maintain the client's privacy? When you are giving care, morning care, evening care, afternoon care, night care, what time doesn't matter. But when you give them care, you have to uh, hide them by pulling the curtain and without uh, not letting other people to come and see the care you provide. Even sometimes client doesn't want their family member to see and view the client, they are, um, uh, uh, the care they are being given. You have to ask the client if anybody has to come, if even the nurse has to come, they have to ask you and you have to allow them by asking the client. If sometimes the client doesn't want anybody, it means she doesn't want or he doesn't want anybody means nobody. Nobody can come and see their care. Safety. Safety is always the priority. Because of safety, clients feel uh, safe in the place they live. And if the safety is not maintained, there is a fall. They can fall from the bed. They can fall from the wheelchair. They can fall from the stair. They can fall from anywhere. That's why they can fall while walking on the street. That's why we have to maintain their safety and free from the hazards and feeling secure about the care provided. They have to feel safe when you are with your client or with your patients. And decision making, decision making, what do you mean by decision making? Who is making the decision? You are making decision or the client? It's the client. Support workers make many decisions during their day, but here we are making the decision of our one. Generally, decision making is the client's concern. They are making the decision of their own, but here we are also making the decision. Consider a goal of support worker dips. This is a decision making for the client support dips. Consider the client's viewpoint. See, what is the idea of the client? We have to determine that. We have to make the decision in terms of the client's viewpoint. Consider your scope of practice. What are the things you can do and what are the things you cannot do? You have to make the decision based on this scope of practice. It means your limitation of the work. Consider your supervisor's viewpoint. You have to also include what your supervisors want from you and the guidance. What are the guidelines? Those guidelines may be the facilities policy, employer's policy, family concern, supervisor's idea, uh, nurse's idea. You have to follow everybody's uh, idea while making decision for the client care. And thank you so much for your patience and listening to this lecture. Thank you.